Football derbies in Argentina are always passionate affairs, but none ignite the emotions more than that between Boca Juniors and River Plate. For many football aficionados, it is the most intense derby in the world, with a rivalry that has been in existence for almost a century. El fútbol es un hecho cultural de los más fuertes de la sociedad argentina. Sin fútbol no sería vida. Boca es un revólver, es explosión. River es poesía. Every match is viewed as a matter of life and death, where the commitment and drama on the field is matched equally by the fans off. And nothing stirs the event more than a goal. Sparking a celebration in which everybody wants to share. Cualquier cosita y salta como leche hervida. Pasión es sangre. ¡Vamos, River! ¡Solo más grande! Although football dominates daily life in Buenos Aires, the city is renowned for its romance, culture, and desire to be recognized as an extension of Europe. It's home primarily to the Porteños, a colorful mix of those with Spanish and Italian heritage, where one invariably tries to outdo the other. Its Spanish roots are still respected, but mass Italian migration at the turn of the century created an added vibrancy that is clearly reflected in the city today. While social inequality is still an issue, there is always a strong sense of national pride and unity when it comes to football. Buenos Aires has always been a city of dreams where one remains the eternal optimist. And when all else fails on the football field, religion is the perfect substitute. Boca and River fans regularly look to the church for divine assistance, especially on the eve of the derby. Football and the church are natural partners, as both are the opiate of the masses. Acá en esta parroquia hay gente que reza para que gane River, hay gente que reza para que gane Boca, y lo compromete a Dios, porque yo creo como cura que Dios debe pertenecer a todos los equipos. When the call from above is answered, players are only too keen to show off their appreciation, hoping this will not remain just a one-off gesture. Yet if God did choose to send his son back, who would he prefer him to play with? River, porque acá tendría posibilidad de hacer todos los milagros. Además, ¿sabes qué lindo sería Jesús con la camiseta de River? El primer tiempo para Boca, el segundo tiempo para River. Boca, River, River, Boca, una pasión que a todos provoca. Ustedes se fueron de la boca porque son unos cagones. Nosotros nos fuimos de la boca porque somos sensibles a los olores. Gallina, bostero, somos la mitad más uno. Somos los campeones del siglo. Maradona, Di Stefano. Whilst comedy makes light of their differences, in reality the divisions are more deeply entrenched. Es como el agua y el aceite. Y en Boca River es el punto máximo del fútbol argentino. Acá lo, lo sufre el país, es decir, acá no te puedes escapar. Que todo en un clásico se magnifica. Once seen as cousins from the same neighborhood, now the red and white image of River and the blue and yellow of Boca create their own distinct divisions. Team colors are exploited in many ways, knowing the value of the team shirt. But on match day, it's purely gladiatorial, with the end justifying the means, and where amusing icons are created out of common folklore. Ángel Armadeo La Bruna, que fue un notable jugador y técnico de River Plate, que cuando entraba al campo de juego, se tomaba la nariz así, haciendo referencia sin duda a que había mal olor. Los bosteros eran porque eran los carros, y los caballos, obviamente, hacían sus necesidades, Y ahí se llamaban bosteros, que era la boca. La gallina, porque los de River son unos cagones. Siempre arrugan. River le ha ganado muchas más veces con garra a Boca que Boca River. Boca es pueblo, Boca es vida, Boca es pasión. Y River es la clase burguesa. Ellos, cuando pierden dos partidos, ya no van más a la cancha. Nosotros, cuanto más perdemos, más vamos.
Está bien que exista Boca, sino con quién se hubiese divertido River. Each derby has its own memory, from Carlos Garcia Gambón's record four goals on his debut for Boca, to Boca's fiery giant Antonio Ratín and River's top goalscorer Juan Moreno, all crowd favorites in their own right. Revolean la camiseta festejando un gol que de toda Europa. Music has always had a strong affinity with Argentine football. Tango idol Carlos Gardel had a much publicized love affair with the game. He was always in the company of footballers who were as much influenced by his music as he was by their sport. The better the player, the greater their musical aspirations. Whilst the tango is more universally recognized, the musical form and rhythm of the murga reflects the true heritage of the Argentine barrios. Its freestyle technique is directly associated with the game, where groups of all ages perform as a unit against other teams. Murga processions traditionally represent the district of their clubs. Boca and River are no exception. skills of one are matched clearly by the rhythm and excitement of the other. The split between Boca and River is often compared to a sad love affair. The art of the tango is a classic reflection of this, as each partner tries to compete with the other. Argentina's football flair has a balletic quality of its own. The grace of the dancer, coupled with the suppleness of the player, are from the same school of movement. Where the deception and foreplay are used to carefully taunt and mesmerize. and possession, an art form to be mastered. Until, of course, the moment of sublime release. Hacen el 8, muchas vueltitas que dan son muy parecidas a las gambetas que hacen los jugadores. Y hey, cuando Boca sale campeón acá en la Boca es una joda terrible. La murga es la expresión cultural del barrio. Y abran las calles, cierren la boca, vamos la banda por tenía piel. Many songs have been attributed to the significance of the shirt or player. River legend Enzo Francescoli's graceful but adventurous style was romanticized for its comparison to the tango. Boca is the heart and soul of Buenos Aires and the birthplace of both Boca Juniors and River Plate. Its rich, colorful facades and earthy social ambience make it unique amongst Buenos Aires barrios. The image of the club, though, is never too far away. Campeón. 
para todo el mundo. Yo tuve la suerte de ser hincha de Boca primero y después jugador. Es el disfrute enorme, porque cuando yo era chico eh, no ganábamos nunca un campeonato. Cuando eh, jugué en la década del 60 ganamos cinco campeonatos. Cuando habla de la Boca, habla del club Boca Junior, la gente de la Boca es, es algo, es todo un mismo corazón. El día que me muera, yo quisiera ser hincha de River. Porque prefiero que se muera un hincha de River y no un hincha de Boca. ¡Viva Boca! The Bombonera Stadium is a daunting experience for anyone, especially the opposition. Boca's fans are fiercely loyal. Their role as 12th man in the team is a major factor. Vivid images of the immigrant arrival in Boca adorn the walls of the stadium. Members agreed their shirt colors would be taken from the first ship to sail through the port. Fate or Providence decreed it would be Swedish. Boca's own star has been through some turbulent times. But in 1995, financial stability arrived when Mauricio Macri took over as president. Que queremos ver a Boca entre los grandes del fútbol mundial, porque nosotros tenemos una hinchada más grande que el Milan, el Real Madrid o la Juventus. Macri's choice of manager was the key to revitalizing the club's waning fortunes. Carlos Bianchi had an impressive track record as a player and coach. He'd won titles with local club Vélez Sarsfield and was admired equally by players and management. Bianchi had the eye of the tiger and set about building a team that would become winners in their own right. Sí, es un profesional que de cualidades espectaculares. En Boca ha obtenido resultados insuperables. Con el material que le dimos, él obtuvo el máximo de cada uno de sus jugadores. Muy inteligente, habla mucho con los jugadores que, que no juegan, que eso para un jugador que no está en actividad o que no tiene la suerte de participar en los 11 es muy importante. Whilst Bianchi focused on the team, Macri set about maximizing the Boca image. The Bombonera, or chocolate box as it was more commonly known, was extensively rebuilt and now has seating throughout. Macri knew the club's rich past would have a valuable influence on its future and was keen to trade off it. As a public corporation, Macri first needed a green light from the fans. Once achieved, he set about helping to upgrade the district and establish a club museum that would fully reflect Boca's colorful past through its many stars and trophies won on a national and global level. La bombonera, para mí es... El templo de Boca Junior. Boca está acá adentro. Nace en el corazón. Seguro que debe correr sangre azul y amarilla por mis venas, ya que tantos años ligado a la institución, yo digo que mi apellido, Ratín, es sinónimo de Boca. Whilst Ratín remains an enduring favorite, the dream of most young locals is to emulate the audacious talents of Diego Armando Maradona. Maradona's deprived social background has as much to do with him being a Boca icon as his football skills. He's the boy who never grew up, but whose genius helped him succeed against great odds. His love affair with Boca is well known. Although he only played a season before joining Barcelona in 1982, he'd made a strong enough impression amongst the fans for them to enshrine him in their memory and hearts forever. He's such a revered symbol that most fans accept his flaws without question. He was all one foot, but what a what a sensational one foot it was. Maradona is un jugador increíble que ha logrado movilizar aún un poco más a los hinchas de Boca de lo que se movilizan por la camiseta en sí mismo. Maradona es un genio. Que Maradona es bien, Pero... bien bostero, bien de boca. Miguel Ángel y Leonardo de Vinci pintaban los dos bien. Maradona y Pelé juegan los dos bien al fútbol. Y estuvo a punto de ser de River. Y bueno, no se concretó por estas cosas del profesionalismo y de, y de, la, de la oferta y la demanda. Whilst River could only imagine what might have been, Maradona became a superstar for Napoli. Ultimately, though, he would return to Boca, hoping to settle the demons that threatened to destroy him. Like most clubs in Argentina, Boca's lifeline remains with its youth policy in the hope of finding another Maradona. The hard reality is that clubs have to find a cycle of talent 
that can bring them both victories and a guaranteed financial return in order to keep the clubs solvent. Grooming such players rests heavily on Boca's youth coach Ernesto Grifa, a seasoned professional with a good eye for talent. Boca, durante 20 años, compró y compró y compró todo lo que había dando, dando vuelta por la Argentina y tuvo resultados malísimos. Nosotros creemos que la fuerza de Boca tiene que estar en formar jugadores que entiendan lo que significa la pasión de Boca, que entiendan lo que significa la locura que genera Boca. Fútbol, digamos, está en el espíritu de toda la gente, de los argentinos. Lo que vemos en el chico es que tenga primero una buena técnica y luego que tenga carácter, que tenga temperamento. Con la pelota, flaco. The jump from great expectations to an accepted star for Boca is not just about ability, but having the right spirit also. Fans go to great lengths just to catch a glimpse of the first team squad. To many, Boca Juniors is more than just a football club. It's an emotion they choose to express in their own special way. Whilst Boca are seen as the sentimental favorites, River's image has been cultivated on being champions. They have won more league titles than anyone else, and in 2000 were officially voted Argentina's club of the past century. River fans are, in fact, from both ends of the social ladder. Ex-president Carlos Menem is an avowed River fan, but there are many who still live inside the Boca district. The Monumental Stadium is as much an icon to the fans as the players themselves. It was the venue for Argentina's World Cup success in 1978. River's style of play has always been seen as the standard for the best in Argentine football. Vamos, viva River! Desde ahí nace el estilo de fútbol argentino, ese del toque de la participación en conjunto del juego solidario, donde había un país que era solidario, que vivía de la misma manera que lo que jugaba River. Siempre de los ocho años, bueno, es como si fuera mi segunda casa y para, para mí River es todo. River's roots are, of course, the same as Boca's, which makes it difficult sometimes to separate the two. Their trophy cabinet, however, clearly demonstrates why they are held in such high regard. Much of this success stems from the achievements of the famous La Máquina. Like a well-oiled machine, it revolutionized world football during the 1940s. It combined Latin flair and great individual skill with devastating results. Players like Pedernera, Labruna, Moreno and Rossi, to name but a few, became national heroes. Unfortunately, the team was robbed of global recognition due to World War II and was badly affected by the South American player strike soon after. La máquina fue la piedra fundamental. Y entonces ese fue, allí nació el estilo, allí nació el gusto, allí nació el sello futbolístico de River. Sencillamente porque tenía los mejores jugadores. Tenía técnica, habilidad, fuerza, viveza para jugar. Tenía absolutamente todo lo que había que tener en ese momento para jugar al fútbol. River Plate is not just a football club. It embraces many sporting and social activities, with over 1,000 people walking through its doors daily. Its stadium is as expansive as Boca's is suffocating. More like Rome's Colosseum, it's a fitting tribute to the most consistent team in the league. Its fans have been brought up on a pedigree and expect nothing less. Despite the pressure, the legacy of La Máquina has left an indelible mark, where victory and style are paramount. The secret for such success lies in its roots, a river is renowned for unearthing a never-ending supply of young talent that seems to effortlessly fill the shoes of those it has transferred. Names like Sivori, Passarella, Batistuta, Crespo, Diaz, Ortega and many others 
all came through these ranks, built on the La Macchina philosophy. Natural individual talent is nurtured and encouraged, rather than suppressed in favor of a predictable team format. Los talentos eh, aparecen naturalmente. Uno trata de, con los entrenamientos de ir perfeccionándolo. Los que vienen a dirigir a River en las inferiores tienen que tener el mismo sentimiento futbolístico y el mismo paladar negro para elegir a los chicos. Esto que tenemos acá abajo, ese paladar negro que tenemos los hinchas de River. Yo lo tengo, el paladar. Lo heredé de mi viejo, que también lo tenía, y mis hijos lo tienen. Ha sacado a lo largo de, de, estos, de estos últimos años Jugadores muy importantes, bueno, están triunfando en Europa. Graduation through the ranks falls under the watchful eye of Valentin Delem, an ex-River player. As a Brazilian, he is a strong advocate of beautiful football and recognizing the familiar black palette trademark. Tactics driven by ball skills as well as zonal play are applied throughout the club by coaches selected primarily for their belief in the River Way. Whilst immigrants poured in, football had already been introduced by the British, who had systematically exported the game around the world as industrial expansion called on British expertise at the end of the 19th century. It did not take long, however, for the Rio Platense style of football to emerge, with River and Boca at the forefront. Boca's famous goalie, Américo Tesoreri, would set the standard for local goalkeepers, remaining a star with both Boca and Argentina for over a decade. Initially, Boca were the more successful, but the arrival of La Macchina soon changed that, before civil war broke out. The player strike crippled Argentina, but on its resumption, relieved fans flocked back to the stadiums. With Peronism sweeping the country, General Juan Perón took full advantage of his popularity with the fans. Fans were re-motivated. The break had merely intensified the rivalry between Boca and River. Success, though, was more divided now. River were in a rebuilding phase, and Boca had created a formidable side of their own. The spirit of the derby, though, was as always never too far away. River not only lost Pedernera and Rossi to Colombia through the player strike, but they would also lose a young Alfredo Di Stefano who was destined to become the best player in the world with Real Madrid. Di Stefano is maybe the best player, the best overall player that I ever saw. He is the brainiest player that I ever saw. Um, and I only saw him when he was in his 30s. He was a natural player with great skill, both feet, good in the air, scored goals, but had this wonderful brain that made the team tick. He was influential more than any other individual player that I've ever seen. Y Alfredo Di Stefano. Ya sabemos quién fue en Europa, lo comparan mejor que Pelé. Di Stefano hizo fácil lo más difícil de todo. Y lo tuve como entrenador. Y me ha dejado muchísimas cosas como entrenador. Por ahí más que Menotti y que Vilar. It matters little what team or year it is. The derby holds the same magic and expectation no matter who is participating. Everyone wants to be a star. And everyone wants to be a winner driven by the history of the event. Many great names have made their mark in the derby, such as Rivers' Omar Sibori, who dominated Italian football in the 1950s with Juventus. But again, it was the last line of defense that produced the most colorful heroes, like Amadeo Carrizo, Rivers' giant goalie, who intimidated forward lines for over 20 years with his imposing personality as well as his ability. The player was to convert a goal, he was called Maduro, he was called de Boca y enfrenta al arquero de River, Carrizo, y Carrizo levanta la mano y le dice, estás en offside. Y el jugador duda, se frena y deja la pelota. En vez de convertir el gol, le entrega la pelota al arquero. Pero, pero, el disparo, 
The greatest symbol of the rivalry is undoubtedly Paco Varejo, now well into his 90s. A national star for Boca during the 1930s, he is still their leading goal scorer, and by his own admission, a Boca fanatic. Vestir la camiseta argentina es lindo, no hay nada que hacer, es un placer, lo más, de lo más grande que puede tener un jugador. Pero yo, de Boca, es lo más grande. River's favorite son in recent years was the Uruguayan Enzo Francescoli. His tenacity, finesse, and forte for scoring when it most counted placed him amongst River's best. La estrella. Whilst the number 10 shirt in Argentina has now been officially retired as Maradona's, it's his heir apparent who is commanding huge interest. Boca's young midfield general, Roman Riquelme, has all the attributes to be one of the greatest. In the opposition camp, Javier Saviola, with his ready-made fan club and innate goal-scoring ability, has already been snared by Barcelona while still a teenager. The most coveted trophy in Latin America is the Copa Libertadores. River's experience had been mixed but in 1996, with the support of a highly charged home crowd, they had the opportunity to secure their second victory against Colombia's America de Cali. Hernán Crespo, now with Lazio, opened the scoring much to the delight of the home fans. A spirited fight back by America de Cali ended after a terrible mistake by their goalie, Oscar Córdoba which led directly to a second goal by Crespo. For patient River fans, this was a moment to savour. They would not let the trophy slip from their grasp again, as they had done several times before. It was a night to celebrate, and as always, the symbolic obelisk in the centre of Buenos Aires was the perfect place to do it. It was also an excuse to humiliate the old enemy. A revitalized Boca under Bianchi would go to Mexico four years later as cup holders and keen to retain it. Now they faced Mexican champions Cruz Azul. A hard-fought away win at the famous Azteca Stadium left them confident of victory in the return leg at the Bombonera. Those unable to get in watched from anywhere they could. A surging run by Riquelme was followed by a close call from Cruz Azul. Boca's partisan fans, realizing the game was far from won, spurred their side on the only way they knew how. Boca's chances were now seriously threatened as Cruz Azul took the lead, much to Bianchi's dismay. Whilst Cruz Azul celebrated, Bianchi looked decidedly anxious. A late rally from Boca failed to break the deadlock. The fans were feeling the frustration. Now it was down to a penalty shootout, with Riquelme first to show his strength of character amidst the sea of uncertainty. Riquelme displayed calmness beyond his years, much to the delight of the Boca faithful. Cruz Azul, though, replied with clinical precision. Beneath his outward composure, Riquelme was suffering as much as anyone. The dependable Delgado, though, made no mistake. Now the fans' optimism began to return. Cordova, who had been both villain and hero in previous finals, was again faced with the responsibility of saving the day. Cordova's magic once more did the trick. Against Palmeiras the previous year, he'd been the saviour. Now he was the star. A relieved Bianchi had earned his place in history as a three-time champion. Now it was time to share it with everyone else. As Boca celebrated, all roads, as usual, led to the centre of Buenos Aires. Over 20,000 fans shared the moment together. 
Boca's return to the top ranks of world club football had already been tested the previous year against Real Madrid for the Toyota Cup. An unexpected early goal by Palermo left Boca fans ecstatic, but the Madrid bench stunned. With Riquelme the architect, Boca were presented almost immediately with another opportunity. Palermo made no mistake, as Madrid could only watch in disbelief. Madrid fought back tenaciously. Roberto Carlos created panic in the Boca defense every time he attacked. Portuguese superstar Luis Figo's free kick found Roberto Carlos, who struck with a great volley. Boca, though, survived the onslaught. The anticipated duel between Figo and Riquelme never eventuated, as Riquelme continually upstaged his more experienced but bemused rival. It was Boca's title, and under Bianchi, they were on a roll. The biggest winner in the lucrative Argentine football stakes is the media giant Torneos, who monopolize local football. The derby has become the perfect tool for today's media hype. Se viene el super clásico del fútbol argentino. Señoras y señores, se viene la lucha por el campeonato. Ya vivimos River Boca. Football is big business in Argentina, as everyone wants to know everything about everybody, especially if it concerns River and Boca. Every medium is maximized, and every image captured and capitalized upon. Stars are created as much off the field as on, by their presentation and exuberant style. Los medios de comunicación tienden a exagerar en todo tipo de rivalidad. No, creo que siempre es lo mismo. Quizás hoy está más potenciado. Hay más rivalidad. Este, el periodismo genera esta rivalidad que, que es, pasa a los límites ya. Con todo el periodismo que hay, este, si perdés un clásico, en la semana te tenés que bancar todo lo que venga. Tenemos en Argentina cuatro, cinco canales de televisión dedicados exclusivamente al deporte. The rapid growth of media giant torneos can be attributed to its foresight in recognizing the potential of football as an industry rather than just a sport. The torchbearer for Argentine football has always been the venerable El Grafico. As old as the game, it was renowned for its pictorial style and editorial insight, be it with player or club. Now, under the helm of torneos, it continues to be a leader through its ability to seize the moment and appreciate the value of the single image. And no single event conjures up a new challenge more than the derby itself, as new concepts become harder and harder to achieve. La fotografía es eh, fundamental en el gráfico. Whilst the media try hard to create the image, the result of the derby is far more difficult to forecast, no matter who or what one resorts to. Media exposure goes hand in hand with merchandising. The bigger the club, the more value to the sponsor. And no two clubs conjure up more interest than River and Boca. Before the hype of today, club product was sold more through the small corner store than the supermarket. It traded off sentiment and familiarity rather than high-pressured sales campaigns. Yo tuve la suerte de tenerlo al Diego acá. Me dio la mano el tipo. Yo no sabía si cortarle la mano o guardármela de recuerdo. No sabía qué carajo hacer. Nosotros enfocamos a Boca, que Boca era un, un equipo donde tenía hinchas en todos los niveles sociales y que a nivel marketing podía ser muy importante. Y bueno, logramos generar ese cambio. Para eso creo que también fue muy importante la asociación estratégica con Nike, que es un producto de una marca muy fuerte, con Boca que tiene una simbología muy fuerte, juntos se potenció un gran producto, ellos han sido un éxito 
en penetración en todos sus productos en Argentina. Había un vendedor ambulante que gritaba chuenga, chuenga, que era una, un dulce. Y el otro que vendía gorro, bandiri vincha, que era el, 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 todo el merchandising que había, no había nada. Y bueno, ahora tenés de corpiños hasta preservativos, hasta no sé lo que se te ocurra. Merchandise for both clubs are now handled by licensing specialists. In the past three years, returns have increased tenfold to over $50 million a year. River trade over 150 products. As far as rivalry goes, across the counter, Boca sells three to four times more product than River. Comercialmente se trata de establecer distancias enormes entre unos y otros. Se le trata de proponer un estereotipo al hincha de Boca y al de River. Y cuando hablamos de dos equipos o dos clubes que tienen hinchas en todas las ciudades del país, es imposible decir el de River es el rico, el de Boca es el pobre, el de River es el rubio, el de Boca es el morocho. No es verdad, eso es mentira. Maradona, Roma, Silvero, Marzolini, Simeone, Ratini, Silveira, Pianetti, Ángel Roja, Alfredo Roja, Menéndez y González. Te digo adiós y acaso, River, 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 pucherito de gallina. Te invito a comer. Porque yo al Diego lo quiero, porque yo soy un botero, se llevo en el corazón. ¿Somos quién? Soy yo, todos nosotros, los miles de hinchas que son el aliento del barrio simulando el corazón de los que juegan. Traditionally, Argentine fans are as passionate as any worldwide. Boca and Rivers are arguably the most animated anywhere. The Derby is a day of tribal celebration, where everyone wants to identify with their team. One of Boca's most famous fans is Raulita, who is as much a fixture at the ground as the team itself. Both camps create a theater of intimidation. Whilst the taunts persist through songs and chants, Goals are what ultimately drive the fans into rapturous delight. El hincha de Boca tiene un gran compromiso. La gente de River tiene paladar negro. Es decir, son hinchas de raza y exigen que el equipo no solamente gane, sino que juegue bien. La camiseta, los colores. A nosotros no nos importa ni los técnicos, ni el presidente, ni nadie. Nosotros vamos por la camiseta y Maradona es eso, es la camiseta. Many of the fans live in poor housing estates that leave a lot to be desired where team allegiance is often their only joy. Such surroundings are a sad political legacy from the days of Evita and Juan Perón. Mi suegra es de Boca, mi señora es de Boca, mis dos hijos mayores son de Independiente y mi hija más chiquita es de River. Nosotros todos de River y ella salió bostea. Que en las propias familias el padre puede ser de Boca y los hijos de River o viceversa. No hay otra cosa que, que pueda... este llenar lo que es Boca para mí. Whilst many families face bitter divisions within their own ranks through their support for the opposition, some of the fiercest debates are fought amongst fans of the same persuasion in the comforts of their own local cafeterias. River fans are notorious for the strength of their opinion and the need to prove a point over anything relating to River. As tempers rise and flare over the seemingly insignificant, Boca fans resort to what they do best. Whilst River continue to denigrate Boca over its smell, Boca taunt River over their character shortcomings. which even the most devout River fan can see the funny side of. Unreserved tickets for the derby are sold out within an hour of going on sale a week before the event. Police are in strong attendance to avoid any trouble once the gates are opened. Sales are organized at both grounds to avoid confrontation. Tickets are like gold dust and nobody wants to leave empty-handed. The battle lines are drawn at every derby, home or away, as each set of fans have their section of the stadium reserved. Traditionally, any home side are keen to show their fans who is in control early. River are no exception. Boca, however, under Bianchi, had become past masters at the counter-attack. 
Delgado's cross found the head of Palermo, who did the rest. Whilst the memory of the last encounter is still fresh in the minds of the fans, it fuels the desire to see the next game. The previous game had the usual controversies and near misses, which invariably influenced the result of the game. But at the end of the day, it was Saviola who produced the magic that every River fan had been sweating on. A draw automatically whets home fans' appetites for the return on their own ground. As fans' eagerness increases, police try hard to maintain a sense of order. Fans are searched thoroughly and close-circuit coverage targets offenders. But in the main, there is only one thing the fans want, a ticket for themselves, and hopefully more, if they can persuade those selling them. Some are unfortunate, whilst others only too happy. Control of the crowd is one thing, control of the match is another. Violence has always been an issue in Latin America, but in Argentina has been dramatically on the increase. Games were cancelled in protest until tougher security was implemented. For the referee, he is the least protected and needs to show strong resolve to ensure things do not get out of hand. In respect to what has to be a conduct disciplined, of respect and of order in the development of the game, I reiterate, it will be plasmed through the reiteration of transgressions, through the lack of and the absence of limits, and through the lack of response of those who have to put those limits and do not do it, or do it in a deficient way. Crowd unrest has often been due to a lack of respect for local referees. Javier Castrilli has faced his fair share of detractors through his reputation for making unpopular decisions and sticking to them. Offenders are given one chance, and if not heeded, the outcome is inevitable. There can be only one person in charge. No matter how vocal or physical the arguments are against him or his colleagues' decisions, he will not be intimidated, even if it requires added protection to avoid further confrontation. Volatile crowd reaction has often created a chain reaction with disastrous results. In 1968, a stampede within the River Stadium caused 70 deaths. The emphasis today is firmly one of harmony. Un Boca River is incomparable, precisamente no solo por los escenarios físicos, sino los escenarios que crea la gente con el sentimiento, con el colorido. Hace 25 años, un referee cobraba mal en la cancha de Boca y tenía que tardar dos días para irse a la cancha. Ahora hay demasiada seguridad para los referees. As match day looms, the weather gods have seen fit to strike with a vengeance. Rain clouds have gathered, making the spectacle a decidedly wet one. It does little to deter the fans, though, with River out in numbers. All roads lead to the Bombonera, with fans dressed to suit their character and allegiance. Whilst the teams make their way to the ground under escort, Rival fans play out their own act of vandalism. Some fans have their own agendas, whilst others are just keen to have an audience. Una linda goleada para esa gallina atrevida. Y es más, los colores de boca los pintó Quinquela. Quinquela para toda la Argentina. Any evidence of the postero image is guaranteed to unnerve the opposition, but enthuse the home crowd. Yo 
que tener de boca. Y como lo de boca son bostero y chancho, es la historia de la vida. Police prepare for the charge ahead as the countdown to the kickoff ticks by. Strenuous checks are made for weapons and anything else that might be offensive, now that flares have been banned from the grounds. Inside, the fans are already taunting one another. The rain has done nothing to dampen their spirits. River steel themselves to the traditional abuse that awaits them. which is in sharp contrast to the thunderous applause that greets Boca. Many a team has lost here by the sheer presence of the fans. There is nothing else the coaches can do. Now it is up to the players. There will be no prisoners. Both sides want the league points, but more importantly, victory in the derby. Boca lead on overall wins, but River have always been the more consistent. From the corner, Boca take an early lead, only for the goal to be disallowed for offside, much to the anger of Arrobuena and the frustration of Bianchi. A desperate Boca interception denies River a chance at goal. A pensive Bianchi watches as players are on the receiving end of some typical derby-style tackles with the inevitable result. From Boca's free kick, a goal-mouth scramble sees the ball fall to Gustavo Schelotto, who slots it home. Boca are in raptures. The bombonera resounds with Boca's jubilation, whilst River fans can only stand in silence. The replay shows how fortunately the ball falls for Schelotto. River try to remain calm. Playmaker Aymar leads by example, weaving his way into the box, only for a handball to stop an almost certain goal. A clumsy tackle by Gustavo Schelotto earns him a second yellow and an automatic sending off. It results in double trouble, as twin brother Guillermo disputes the play, but to no avail. As the rain continues to fall into the second half, Guillermo Schelotto is intent on avenging his brother's dismissal. Riquelme tries to take command of the game, but it's River who are creating the bigger openings. Pablo Aymar is a constant threat to Boca, but Ibarra's long pass to Schelotto meets with a sharp response from River's defense. Cries for a foul are ignored. An angry Scalotto garners little sympathy from coach Bianchi and only a yellow card from the referee. Bianchi adds up the cautions, whilst the commanding figure of goalie Cordoba confidently takes a dangerous cross to ground. Coach Gallego spurs his troops on and a great ball by Aymar leads to what appears to be a perfectly good goal, only for a marginal offside decision to rule it out, leaving Gallegos most upset. A bad tackle on Riquelme results in Rivers' captain Trotta taking a walk and levelling the numbers. However, with time running out, Aymar's chip is forced home by substitute Cuevas. Bianchi looks for the offside whistle, to no avail. Much to the delight of the River fans, but to the silence of the shock Boca fans. As the re 